my name is Alan Kendunga and I'm a founder and CEO of Talent Match. Talent Match is a social venture that's working to close the skills gap in Rwanda, particularly focusing on uh, university students um, and graduates who are looking to enter into the workplace. So we work closely with employers and also education institutions yeah, to prepare our graduates for the job market. Yeah. Studying Talent Match was out of me observing what was happening on the market, especially with young graduating students who were graduating with, you know, theories, but they didn't know how to uh, approach the market or to integrate within the market. And I thought the one way to do it is through skills development um, and essentially creating career centers for education institutions where we can nurture this talent um, as soon as they get on campuses and see them through uh, the four years or three years or six years they are on campus. Yeah. So, I mean, I had already started working with young students way before when I was still in school, so around 2017, but we didn't officially start until uh, 2019, last year. So. Um, and starting officially means, you know, we were able to put ourselves together, we registered, uh, we started bringing some people on the team. So that was all last year, um, 2019. But before that, I was already involved in different ways in the space. So when we launched last year, it was a very selective program and we were putting our applications out there. The first cohort, we only selected 10. The second cohort, we selected 50. Um, and in total, the people we've been able to work with, both who went through the two cohorts and those who joined us later on as, you know, through referrals and different, uh, different platforms, we've been able to uh, work with about uh, 115 students who have already graduated. Um, and are actually outside on the market. Right now we are looking at thousands of students coming to us and using our services. We started officially in the University of Rwanda in November. That's when they reopened uh, schools. That's when we also launched our first career center. And since we started, we've seen more than 40 students on one campus. Uh, also given that most of the students are now actually remote, um, and we foresee that, you know, starting next year in Jan and moving forward as we roll out in other campuses, we'll see more students, um, which is to be expected. But currently we're only at a CBE campus um, and we'll start rolling out to other campuses starting early next year. Most of the people that have gone through our program are either doing internships or are placed full-time. Um, or volunteering. So because it's one of the things that we encourage them, we don't want them to sit and wait for a certain time for them to get to work. We want them to start now and to explore as many opportunities as possible. As we onboard students, we also want to engage and onboard employers so that we can um, learn from what they need um, in terms of skills, but also create opportunities for young students that we're working with for them to be able to go and practice what they're learning. Challenges are always going to be there. Challenges that we meet uh, throughout the journey are different. When you're just starting, it's just a matter of even finding the right people to join the team and, you know, working with a zero budget and knowing that, you know, you don't have the resources, but you want to do what you need to do. So that was a big challenge, I think, for us starting, not having resources, but it also was been, uh, it was also a blessing in this guys because it allowed us to work with the resources that we had and to be creative in the sense that we will still be able to offer what we need to be offering and to offer the services with, a, with not much resources. The biggest challenge that we actually have to do with on a daily basis is people's is attitude um, and people not understanding this concept, at least in the Rwandan context. Um, it's a challenge that we face from both the student side and also institution-wise, but also from, you know, employment uh, space. But the good thing is that people are starting to realize the need 
for soft skills and the need to prepare our graduates to be able to fit into the job market. Um, so I think the challenges are always going to be there, you know, scaling, even after we find a partner and we have resources, we're going to be thinking about how do we scale this, how do we sustain this, um, and how do we ensure that the quality that we want is the quality that's going on the market. So I think the challenges are always going to be there, but the biggest is usually resources, uh, finding the right people, and then obviously getting people to understand what you're trying to do. People come to us and say, so if I sign up and I come through for trainings and so forth, will I be guaranteed a job? And the answer is always no, because we are not necessarily preparing you just for the job as an end goal, but the end goal is can you develop the capabilities needed even when you land that job? Because oftentimes you find people find jobs and they cannot even deliver. And so it becomes a cycle where you know, employers are constantly trying to find the right fit. Um, and so we always tell people who are coming to us, we are preparing you to be the best candidate to be the best employer you can be, when that opportunity comes, whether through us or through your network or any other ways, to be able to deliver to expectations, right? We don't want you to get to a working environment and you have no clue what to do and you're struggling. We have people who come to us and say, I want to start my own venture, can you help me figure out how to present my idea or to even think through my idea and think through all the different um, questions that I need to answer. And we do that. It's not someone who we are preparing to be employed. It's someone who could potentially be an employer, but they also still acquire these skills that they need to be able to fine tune their project and, and to be able to go out there and pitch their project. So the skills that we are offering are not necessarily, we are doing this because we want to be able to feed the job market and to feed employers. But our biggest concern is do we have the right skills that are needed? Do we, are we developing the right workforce? Is the workforce dynamic, agile? And can they adapt faster? That's really what we tell people. When you come to Talent Match, we are not guaranteeing you a job or an internship. What we guarantee you is that you walk away with the skills that you need to be competent. We have um, three key programs at Talent Match. One is uh, our programs for undergrad. Even though I didn't mention the corporate side, we actually have corporate programs where, um, so if, within the undergrad program, let me first focus on that. The undergrad program covers everything from, you know, resume preparation to exploring different job opportunities and internships, and even within what you're studying. How can you, uh, because some students end up in fields they are not interested in, but because either they're on government scholarship or their parents want them to study that, they just do it for the sake of you know, getting out of the way. Um, so even with that, we work with students to help them understand what you're learning, even though you may not want to do pharmacy, what skills can you take from pharmacy and apply maybe to photography and videography? And those could include teamwork, those could include communication skills. Um, and so we focus on skills that are um, cross-cutting, uh, you know, regardless of the industry. And um, those include communication, presentation skills, you know, ability to um, right and you know all these skills that are usually taken for granted so those are the skills that we focus on for undergrad and also networking because we know a lot of students still struggle to find the right network and then it becomes you know like your network becomes your 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 net worth if they people like to say but then we want to make sure that students understand learning the right network is not magic. Like anyone can have a, na a network regardless of your background. And that's a, it's something that you have to set out to do intentionally. For corporate uh, programs, we have, of course, you know, talent sourcing because we are right here, we are nurturing talent. So if an employer comes to us and say, I want to hire a number of students from the University of Rwanda will be ready or from you, will be ready to serve them. 
The other program that we have for corporate is uh, upskilling programs because we also know that just because you have a job doesn't mean you have the skills that you need. We are in a, in a consistently changing environment and you know with things now going digital and people working remotely and all of that, people have to learn new skills and adapt uh, to new, you, you know, new normals. So what we're working on currently is upskilling programs for, for corporate companies. So we have companies coming to us and say, I'm having issues with my team. Can you do a team uh, building or uh, productivity building? activities for, for us or training and, and we can undertake that. The other program that we have and it's uh, mostly for students right now is the entrepreneurship program and the entrepreneurship program we want to be able to give students an opportunity to test what it's like to start your own venture. As a person starting, if, even though it's not so in like completely separate from the company itself and the challenges that the company has to go through. I think as an individual, I don't know if I would attribute the challenges to my age or my sex, you know, being female, but I do think that most of the challenges that I've faced, other entrepreneurs do, you know. And when I set out to do things, I'm not thinking about myself in terms of age and I'm not thinking about myself as a female. I'm just thinking about myself as a young, as an entrepreneur who wants to solve a problem. I just think about myself as a problem solver. People think that, you know, just because you're young, and I think in Rwanda we are a bit lucky because we see now more young people doing wonderful things and going out of their way and solving issues and problems. And same thing for women. I mean, in Rwanda we are champions of, you know, women empowerment. So. I think for me, when I set out, usually the challenges that I've seen are not, maybe they might have, you know, the fact that I'm a female or I'm young as, you know, one of the reasons in disguise, but usually I don't look at them like that. I see them as challenges that anyone, in many rooms I walk in and they're like, ah, okay, hmm, interesting. We didn't expect, we were expecting someone bigger, someone, grown up, someone maybe, you know, and, and that can be uh, disappointing sometimes, but it's also not a reason for you to say, I can't do this anymore. Um, it's also good to challenge the norm, to challenge people's perceptions. 10 years from now, five years from now, 100 years from now, what I hope that Talent Match will be able to do is to um, really bridge the skills gap that we have in Rwanda and to create uh, an alternative for young people to upskill themselves, to work on themselves, to grow and to not be looked at as, you know, just another number or another grade or um, because currently, you know, a lot of young people think I just have to perform in school and I'll be fine or only people who are top performers in class will make it in life, but that's not true. People need to know you as a holistic person. And so the goal for me, I think, is to see Talent Match really being a platform where young people can come, learn, thrive, and, and, and be anything, um, and go out and, and, and really pursue their dreams and pursue things they want to do, um, and seeing that uh, as part of our culture and not just um, a few people because you know these are you know one in a million people. My position is um, IT officer or IT support so I'm the tech guy obviously. I met with the founder of Talent Match. I, I had to work with them with their website and later on they onboarded me in their team and I'm grateful for that. Being read by a woman or a man, because I have made those kind of situations whereby my boss was a man and sometimes uh, was a woman, uh, it's not different. It's the same thing, maybe what differs is uh, the attitude and I think the attitude of someone does not depend on his or her gender. So I think being led by a woman and a man is the same thing as we are in a country. Our education has 
has taught us that women and men are equal. So we are in a country which promotes women as well as men. So the experience is good, but I can't say it's good or bad compared to a man's experience. It's all the same thing. A boss is a boss. That's what I can say. First of all, we are a team of young people which understands what you need. We know that there is a skills gap in Rwanda, so we want to try to minimize that gap. So if you come and join us, we'll make sure that you gain those 21st century skills that will make you irrepressible and uh, it will make you a better person uh, related to your career life. We'll make sure that to every place where you will work at, you will leave that memory. When you, when you work with young people, uh, when you usually in your daily life you meet young people, you try to experience. I'm a young person and working with young people uh, is a good thing because we have the same attitudes, we have the same stories to share and we actually have the same goals. During COVID and mainly during uh, where we're supposed to work at home and not meet physically, um, one of the challenges was we were not ready for that, that's one, and working remotely was something which was hard and you know when you were not in a kind of an office where your boss tells you can you please do that and it's only online calls, online meetings, so we're not adapted to that but as the time went on, so we were ready for that and we were in that kind of situation and we adapted. I think the first thing for me, the, the advice I would give them is just start. Um, there's never going to be a perfect time to start. You will never feel like you have all the things you need to start. So as long as you feel this is an idea, the only way to see if it will work or not is to test it and start. So go start it, test it. If it doesn't work, it's okay. Someone wants, when I was just starting Talent Match, um, a friend who is also a partner in, in Boston Consulting uh, Company, BCG, told me, you know, Alan, if you take this on and you, even if you do it for a year and it doesn't work, you realize it doesn't work, you'll be much more um, desirable or attractive to employers more than just finishing school and looking for a job like any other person because you will have learned a lot of, of um, skills from that, you know. And so, and that I think showed me that, you know, it's okay for me to just go in and start. And even if I fail, I would have learned something. Obviously no one wants to go in and fail, but um, what I would tell every young person is you will never know if this is going to be successful or not um, until you actually start it. Mm -hmm.